in man. Praise the Lord. Amen is prophetic. The Bible ends with Amen. Meaning everything written, so shall it be. Praise the Lord. So when you say Amen, it's not a religious chanting. You are not making, you are not chanting. It's a declaration. You are putting, you know, no matter how beautiful a checkbook is, without the signature, <laughs> so even if someone steals your checkbook, you, do, you don't panic. If they don't know, so what people do most times, they learn how to sign. They learn how to impersonate people by stealing their signatures and all of that. So if your checkbook is stolen, you don't panic so long you know that your signature cannot be copied or it cannot be impersonated. So amen is the signature. No matter what you say or what is said to you, or you say amen, we are putting a seal on that. Praise God. We are in the season of revival. And um, with the revival that's brewing and blowing around the world, you will not just be a partaker, you'll be a custodian. All right, let's receive our tithes this morning. What a God we serve. And We'll go straight into the hymn and then we hear the word of the Lord. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Like I said to you, Titan is not a law. Abraham was before the law. Titan is a covenant, it's actually a relationship. It's a relationship. Amen. So it has no business, it has nothing to do with the old or the new testament it is just a relationship father we thank you for the privilege to tight we ask that the devourer is rebuked perpetually we speak on common lifting we call for the con we decree that will become financial high flyers in jesus powerful name come on help me paul hallelujah holy Holy, 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 holy. Come on, let me say. Holy is the Lord. friend like the lowly Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus, no, not one, no, not one, none as could heal all our souls' diseases, no, not 
toi Non à toi Jesus
Sliding is when you stand on a spot and people pass you by. When you are waiting in such a time, you know, there are people who, when they're talking about the end time, they tell you there is war, there is killing, there is strange diseases. All of those are not the end. Those are signs of the end. Those are not the end. Negativity will not herald the coming of Jesus. No. No. That's not what the Bible says. Negativity, bad news, killings. They say, oh, all of these things are signs that Christ is coming. No. In Malachi chapter 4, he says, I send the spirit of Elijah before the great terrible day of the Lord. What will herald the coming of Christ is a revival. It's the spirit of prayer. The whole place is going to be on fire for God and in the midst of that fire, Now, what's the spirit of Elijah? The spirit of Elijah is the spirit of prayer. It's the spirit of intercession. The spirit of Elijah is the spirit of prayer. Amen. It's the spirit of prayer. A revival will break forth. So this is not the generation of those. We have no business with discouragement. We have no business with anybody encouraging us. Say, okay, and be No, we are self-encouraged. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 6. He said these people have gone backward, not forward. They've gone backward. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 and 15, Moses said to the people, stand still. God said, what do you mean? Tell them to go forward. Don't stand still. God wants us to be on the forward movement. Exodus 20, Genesis rather, sorry, 26 verse 13. This man was great. He went forward. He was great until he became Exodus 26, 13. Exodus 26, 13. God wants you to be great. You know, he says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, if any man draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. One time when Joshua, Joshua was in the midst of a, of a hop hill battle when Israel lost to Ai. They lost over 30 men. That was not Joshua's problem. Joshua's problem was in Joshua 7 verse 8. He said, what shall I say? That Israel turned his back for his enemies. Joshua 7 verse 8. So I'm going to ask for the empowerment. An unstoppable auction. An unstoppable virtue. A grace to be unstoppable. It's so painful. You see young men now. You know, when you have ministers who come and tell you that please try and take it easy, try and rest, take it easy, try and rest. That word rest is not, they are not talking to young men. They are not talking to youths. Because when they were your age, they did not rest. They didn't take it easy. Are you listening? They didn't, don't take it easy. Don't increase your prayer life. Increase your fire. Increase your study. I was talking to one of my sons and he was communicating with me. I said, I've noticed the three, four times you've spoken to me, not one scripture. Your language is so weak. When last year did you study scripture? Your language is weak. There's no scripture. There, are no, there is nothing on fire in your... Amen? Praise God. So it's not time for you to take it easy at all. I study at least 10, 12 chapters of the Bible every day. And I'm busy. And you, what, what are you doing? Who is your father? 
with all the pressure, all the engagement. My spiritual life first before anything. Amen. God said, when you come before me, you'll see 14 verse 2. Say, take with you words. As you are going to the house of God, even if you don't take an offering, take words. Even if you forgot your tithe, don't forget words. In the midst of a fast, hear what he said to Daniel, Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12. From the day that you set your heart to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard. It's like I'm starting the minister's conference already. Let's, let's just pray. Amen. Let's just pray. I want us to just pray. Grace to be unstoppable. Grace to proceed like a trailer that fell break. Moving into destiny like a trailer without bricks. Anything you hit scatters. Anything that hits you destroys. You know what I said? Anything you hit scatters. Anything that hits you destroys. Say in the name of Jesus. I can in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to be unstoppable. I didn't hear you. I receive grace. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. La kala prakata sayash, arakatea, laleya da. Iya gada prakata 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 Rakaseba. Pass. Akakakakaka. Yaga da 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 In Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank you. Lift your hand to heaven. Blessed be your name. Father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. We the bread of life, thus I come alive, thus I change my world. Father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. With the bread of life, that's I come alive, as I change my world. Breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Come, breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name. Breathe, Lord. 
Come breathe your name upon me, breathe. Come breathe your name upon me. Lift your hands as we sing to him. Just breathe your name. Ashala nata kruse e baladiyande. Breathe, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Master. Blessed be your name. Can we lift our hands to heaven as we sing hallelujah to him? And hallelujah. Everyone lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. And worship him. Hallelujah. Let's sing it. Hallelujah. The glory of God is in this place. Hallelujah. The anointing of Jesus is in this place today. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I love you. Lord, I love. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love. Akashaka pata sakata Araka sapata O rapa sakate kalaba Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Glory, glory. Glory. The glory of God is in our midst today. The glory of God. I can hear the bread of heaven. The sound of many waters. Is the sound of worship coming from his throne. And there are sounds of adoration. As men from every nation. Lift their voice to make his glory known. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The heavens and angels bow. Three team, we worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Immortal God, invincible. Invincible God, 
worship. Pray in the Holy Ghost, people. We love you, Master. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we worship. All right, clap your hands and take your seats, everybody. Job 1 14 to 19 and Psalm 121, Psalm 124, verse 7. Job 1 14 to 19, Psalm 124, verse 7. Job 1 14 through 19, Psalm 124, verse 7. And there came a messenger of, unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing the asses, and the asses the feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is falling from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried away, carried them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone am escaped to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I alone am escaped. I only am escaped alone to tell this. Psalm 124 and verse 7. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And I started... A second service last Sunday on I am escaped. I am escaped. I am escaped. I am escaped. And I began to explain revelationally the actions and the revelations behind that encounter between God and as it were when the enemies, when the devil came amongst the sons of God and the conversation that ensued. And I began to explain to us what we can pick from that. The Bible says, and the devil came before God. He came with other sons of God before God. He came and submitted himself to the Lord. And I said, number one, Satan is accountable to God. So no matter what you're going through, no matter the challenges, understand that. Let that be well seated in your heart that the devil is accountable to God. He can't be more powerful than, he, than who he is accountable to. So that gives you an assurance that you are connected to the Most High. I said Satan is accountable to God. And the next thing I did say to us, by that way, I said to us clearly that Satan is not omnipresent. The devil can be any, everywhere at the same time. Only God has that quality and that virtue. Satan believes in structures and delegations. The devil cannot be in America and in London at the same time. There is strong demonic structuring and that is one of the networks that is so well preserved because it's over 6,000 years old. And I explained to us that the Bible says, <laughs> can I go on? Can I go on? The guy, Bible says that God said to Satan, you can do anything you want to him, but touch not his life. That means that Satan has a limit. The devil cannot exceed a particular limit. Anything that cannot finish you, furnishes you. Anything that cannot finish you, furnishes you. Satan can finish you. I said Satan can finish you. Satan is too small to finish you. There is a hand of God upon your life. There is a grace of God upon your life. 
that sometimes you see battles everywhere sometimes you see mountains and you see limitations you see struggles all around you but let the devil be a liar and let God be true Satan cannot finish you a thousand will fall at my side ten thousand at my right hand it shall not come near me your life will get better and better first Chronicles 11 and verse 9 he said and David was stronger and stronger Esther 9 and verse 4 he said and Mordecai works greater and greater second Samuel 3 and verse 1 there was a long war between the house of David and the house of Saul and the house of Saul was weaker and weaker and the house of David was stronger and stronger Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 for the path of the just is like a shiny light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day there is an anointing upon your life that anointing guarantees preservation that anointing guarantees God keeping you and you cannot be extinguished you cannot see extinction I attack all of that and I explain some things to us I say when you see attack in rapid succession the intention is extinction any attack in rapid succession car breakdown uh, Things not working. Office packing up. This happened. When you see attack in rapid succession, it happened to Job. He lost business. He lost home. He lost. It was succession. Why? The target was his life. A child is sick. Another child breaks down. Another one fails the exam. There's a conflict in your marriage. There's a conflict in your business. The intention of the devil. The intention of hell. The intention of the devil is to is to bring extinction. Is to bring permanent elimination am I talking to somebody here the wife of Job was not attacked the wife of Job was not killed because God kept her I preached a message some time ago reduce the Twitter on this microphone I preached a message some time ago on the errors of Job I said one of the problems that Job had is that Job was not sensitive the sons of God were gathered Job was bankrupt of divine presence the sons of God were gathered and they were in the presence of God and Job was absent what was Job doing when the sons gathered where was Job when the sons gathered in the presence of God so we see Job was bankrupt of divine presence I can't go into all of that now I said many things about that and I mentioned I said if you are escaped you must kill wrong assumption what did they say fire came from heaven in other words God was behind the pain and I explained to you God is not behind no pain that is a theological somersault God is not behind no pain let nobody tell you when you are sick that God is trying to teach you a lesson the Bible says in Matthew 19 16 Luke 18 18 Mark chapter 10 verse 17 someone met Jesus and said good master and what shall I do to inherit eternal life and Jesus said why call it thou me good for there is none good except God so if it is not good it is not good God if it is not good it is not God if it is not good it is not God if it's not good it's not God he has called us into a marvelous life a marvelous light that should produce a marvelous life so anything happening in your life now they forget what Job said Job said the Lord give it the Lord take it it wasn't Jesus that said that it was Job you cannot tie your life or tie your encounters and experience to a pronouncement that came from the lips of Job on a very bad day that was not of God God does not take what he gives the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance the thief commit no but to steal is the devil Ecclesiastes 3 verse 14 he said whatsoever God does abide forever nothing can be added and nothing can be taken we, 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 we ended all this last last service let me just move on and I said, fight helplessness. If you escape, fight helplessness. They took the oxen and the asses. What, what's the duty of the oxen? What does that typify? What does the asses typify? Uh, an, an oxen is a burden bearer. Asses are burden bearers. That want, the devil wants you to come to a place of being helpless. Of being helpless. There are people that are helpless, hopeless. There's nothing, there's nothing to look forward to. 
The devil wants you to come to that point in life. But that devil is a liar, including his mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says the next thing that hits them, the Bible says that certain people called the Chadians came and they took their camels. Camels are connections for mobility. If you are escape, you must, you must, you must be passionate. You must be passionate and hungry for motion. You must be passionate and hungry for motion. It's an error to be stagnant. When you stay too long on the spot, you start looking like the spot. No one called of God, no one sent by God, no one redeemed by God is supposed to be on the same level over time. If people meet you where they left you, it's a proof that you are not moving. If people always meet you where they left you, it's a proof that you are not moving. It's a proof that you are stagnant. It's a proof that there is no motion. And hear me, child of God, everyone called by God is supposed to move forward no wonder he said to them he said don't tell them to stay on the spot tell them to move forward who are the Chaldeans who are the Chaldeans that came if you want to move you must understand the revelation of the Chaldeans the Chaldeans are the descendants of Babylon and Babylon means confusion if the Chaldeans took the camels if the Chaldeans took motion if the child has stop movement and the child has missed confusion it means confusion confusion is anti-motion confusion is anti-motion when you come to a point in your life when you don't know the next step to take when you don't know the next decision to take you are stagnant for long there are people today who don't know if they are students or they are not students because there is an academic punctuation that puts the academics in limbo there are people today who don't know if they are politicians or not politicians there are people today who don't know if they are married or not married because of the way the home is going there are people today who don't know if they are landlords or their tenants because there's a land dispute the devil puts you in that state that state of confusion that state of perpetual stagnation but there is a word from God today as you hear the sound of my voice everything that has kept you on this spot anything that has made you confused anything that has limited you that has quarantined you on one spot by the power of the Holy Ghost I see it broken I see it broken. I see it broken. I see it broken. The Bible says in Joel chapter 3 and verse 14 multitude upon multitude in the valley of decision. He said the day of the Lord is near. The valley of decision. There are people who are in the valley of decision, not knowing what step to take, not knowing what turn, what road to turn by reason of the manipulations of hell in their lives. They don't know what step to take. All the period of confusion all the time of confusion what the enemy does is to put you in stagnation where you would have moved in motion the devil fires confusion and I speak to you by the voice of God as you hear me and hear me well after this meeting is over I see lights coming I see illumination nothing provokes motion like direction nothing sponsors motion like illumination in Psalm 36 and verse 9 for with thee O Lord is the fountain of light for in thy light shall we see light see his light you locate your own light for in thy light shall we see light Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 7 he said truly is sweet for it's a good thing for the eyes to behold the sun in the bible says in ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 13 he said light excelleth darkness as wisdom excelleth fully in ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verse 9 the bible said better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire i'm talking about the light the light of the word of god the light of scripture the light of revelation the light 
light of illumination so that you know what next to do you know what next step to take you know what next decision to be involved with i'm talking about illumination in john chapter 8 and verse 12 jesus said i am the light of the world for whosoever followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life there is a light you need for life there's a light you need for your next level am i talking to somebody right now i'm talking about the light nothing eradicates nothing eradicates nothing eliminates stagnation like illumination in every dark spot of your life in every dark corner of your life in every dark angle of your life as you hear me today receive illumination receive light receive direction if your amen is louder you are the one i'm talking to i don't want to dwell too much on this because the next point is my emphasis for this service before we we blast in the next in the next service third service is terrible it's terrible it's a volcano so everyone everyone in third service can tell you but before we go there i want to dwell on the next one the bible said the last thing to be hit was his family this is a family service the last thing that must escape is your family i want to talk to you today the devil took everything before he hit his family listen to me and hear me well i need you to listen very well loud and clear because there are so many of you who are carrying certain truths that i consider half truths that people tell you that once you're in christ you're a new creature you are a new creature all things are i believe in that but you have to study the scripture before that scripture paul was talking about his own perception he said we knew we know no man after the flesh because when jesus was around physically paul knew jesus Jesus, but he saw him as the son of a carpenter he saw him as that carpenter's son Jesus the son of Joseph the carpenter he knew him in the flesh and Peter knew him in the spirit so when Paul repented and became a believer he, he was imagining how many years he has lost if he had knew Jesus the time Jesus walked on the shores physically that is why he said in 2nd Corinthians 5 16 he said henceforth we know no man after the flesh though we have known Christ after the flesh we knew him after the flesh we knew him in the physical but now we now know him in the spiritual but am i speaking to somebody when you say you are a new creature when you became born again did your nose change did you become taller when, what Christ did for you it was your spirit man that was recreated it had nothing to do with your flesh it had nothing to do with your bone it had nothing to do with your DNA DNA is not spiritual it is biological am I talking to somebody here you must begin to understand that you have been saved but it's your duty that is why if you say Christ has done everything how come it tells you that you should be transformed by the renewing of your mind it is your duty to empower your mind i'm telling you if you don't address what attack your family look at a man do you know in the lineage of judah the lineage of judah was a lineage of premature death judah he had a son called air air died premature he had a son called honor honor died premature it was in that lineage that thing entered into the life of david david as a king they were chasing him he was running up and down what was chasing him spirit of death that was in the lineage of judah because david escaped it came after adonijah he came after absalom the spirit of death it left there and entered into christ even our lord and master jesus christ from the tribe of judah there was a premature death that came after him that was why in hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7 the bible said with strong tears he was praying and for him that is able to preserve him from death do you think that is a joke even judas is carrot that was from the tribe of judah he died premature because there was a pattern there was something running through the system am i talking to you somebody look at your family even if you have no revelation don't you have observation look at your family and check what is happening there check that power that is fighting there is a pattern in your family that is what i came to address that is what i came to crush the power that stopped your mother the power that stopped
like your father today it shall be broken listen to me listen the bible says psalm 86 verse 6 is set at solitary in families in joshua chapter 7 and verse 14 when god was calling out all the sons of Achan, the bible says joshua 7 14 he called them by families anytime god looks at you god does not see an individual without seeing a family Oh my God, I wish I can talk to somebody here. When he came for Peter, when Satan came for him in Luke 22, verse 32, 31, 32, 33, you know what Jesus said to him? He said, Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired you that he may sift you as wheat. Hear me? He said, but I have prayed for you. Yet the next thing he said, when you are converted, Stretching thy brethren. So the object of attack was not Peter, it was his brethren. But Satan had to come to Peter. You are seeing your brother broke. It's not your brother that is the target, it is the brethren. You are seeing your sister not married. It's not your sister that's the target, it is the brethren. You are seeing someone in your family who cannot rise. The target is the brethren. When you are stretching, when you are converted, stretching your brethren. Why did the devil attack your finance? He's after your children. Why did the devil attack your marriage? He wants to mess up your children's future. So that since your marriage did not work, their own cannot work. And if their own cannot work, their children's own cannot work. It's a demonic pattern. That is what I came to address today. The power that stopped you before. The power that stopped others before you. Today, it shall be broken. <laughs> Attack! Job, Satan final. Final last shot. Listen, I'm going to show you the strategy on how the devil empties family. Because we can see that in that practice of Job. Am I communicating here? I have seen great preachers of the gospel. This is 33 years I've been holding the microphone. If they remove that from some of, some of your age, I don't know what is left. Forget the way I look. I carry glory. So if you see me looking younger and younger, it's glory. Am I talking to somebody here? I can tell you, we had a brother, one brother called Brother Abraham. In the year 2002, I read a book by the E.W. Kenyon. It was on new creation realities. And after then, I began to preach certain kind of message. When I walk into places, people are preaching, die by fire. I walk out. I say, these people do not understand their right in Christ. They do not understand dimensions of revelation. When they are preaching, die, die. As what kind of nonsense is this? We are new creature. Christ has done everything. And one time, Brother Abraham told me that we should go to his hometown in Esan that we should go and have a crusade we had an open hair crusade and i spoke against wickedness brother abraham i said let's pray through the night he said he's not praying because he has gotten dominion and authority over witchcraft that night brother abraham slept while it was morning i was tapping him up for the morning session brother abraham did not wake up he died in his sleep and something told me when he died i became angry in my spirit i said god what is happening and god said to me what you call new creation you are not preaching me you are preaching Paul it is Paul that said all those things Galatians is Paul Colossians is Paul he said do you want to preach me I say yes he said go to Matthew go to Mark go to Luke go to John say the things I said did I believe in war yes did I believe in judgment yes did I stand against wickedness yes stop preaching Paul my son preach what I preach and I began to listen to him and I heard one spot here he said uh, in Luke 19 verse 27 uh, all my enemies uh, that would not that I reign over them uh, bring them and slay them before me I am speaking to you by the voice of prophecy the power that stopped others in your family every foundational altar every force of hell that stopped your mother that stopped your father that stopped your brother by the power of the Holy Ghost uh, they cannot stop you they cannot stop you you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty
mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. Somebody shout fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take your seat. Sit, sit, sit. Sit. I was, when we were at the other auditorium, which is now the children's church, it takes about eight or 10,000 people then. I was ministering. We had a, a session when you come and sit. I was ministering and I put my hand, I was just preaching my hand was on a girl. I was ministering. I was about to remove it. God said, put it. I left it there. After a while, God said, kill her father. Now, how do you say that with microphone and camera? So for my own good, I removed the mic. And God said, do not sift the word. Kill her father. And I laid hands again. I took off the mic. I said, your father dies. She looked at me. She was coming for the first time. How do you enter a church for the first Sunday and they killed your father? How do you understand? I said that. I said, our father dies. And at the end of the service, she came with her friend. After the service, the friend is an old member, and they were talking. And he said, she was quiet. I said, why are you quiet? He said, sir, you said something that my father, my father said, yeah. Oh, yeah. I held the hand. Let me try and see I can correct the words. And I repeated it. Your father dies. Now, that is not a nice thing to say. God is not nice. He's a man of war. God is not nice. Am I talking to somebody here? And she got back. She got back. According to she's from a place called Ozala. It is in a dull state. She said the father that evening was moving in a commercial vehicle. As was moving a commercial vehicle, the father was stopped by some policemen on the way. They told everybody to come down, and the man was summer dilly darling. One of them threatened to shoot at him. He didn't know when the bullets left the gun, and the father died. The girl was weeping and crying. But by Thursday, somebody called her, and the person said, I've been looking for your number for nine years, and began to ask her questions. Do you know before the father died, the father confessed to someone that he has married the daughter in the spirit. Physically, nobody can marry her. Hear me and hear me well. I have seen powers of prayer. I was privileged to be in a church in Lagos, a very popular ministry, pastored by a man who is a known great man of God. And I was in this church, we were talking in his office, and he said, Apostle, we do not bring strangers to our ministry, but there's no way you can come and greet me since you are in Lagos, and I'll let you, let you go like that. He said, you must put your leg on my altar, and you must pronounce words on my people. And I said, man of God, you will not like it. There's no need. I just came to drop a word here, and drop a seed, I'm going. He said, no, you must put your feet and speak a word. And I got there that day. It was not a major service. It was like a worker's you know, retreat or something. And I got there, I saw somebody on the altar. He said, witchcraft is not real. Wickedness is not real. It is just a figment of imagination. All those things are not real. They are under your feet. Glory, 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 glory. I was looking at this guy. I said, this guy does not understand. You don't know what I'm seeing. If you know what I have seen, like what Paul said, he said, after the manner of men, I fought the boost of Bashar. I fought the boost of Ephesus. After the manner of men, he said, I fought the beast of Ephesus. First Corinthians 15 32. There is a beast of Ephesus. After the manner of men, I fought the beast at Ephesus. So there are people you see as humans. They are not humans, they have the heart of beast. Am I talking to somebody here? You must be brutal to confront them. And the young man said all he said. He said, The Greek word for holiness is continuous and he was saying all he was saying and when he was done the man of God said we have a prophet in our midst we we'll like the prophet to come and just bring a word to us he's actually going to the airport so I took the microphone and I first of all celebrated the young man but he didn't know what he was talking about and I said to them wickedness is real the Bible says in first John 5 19 we are of God but the whole world lieth in wickedness while I was talking the 
young man took his Bible and he went out and stayed in the parking lot. I don't know what he was doing in the car park. And the power of God hit the building. When the anointing hit the place, a woman began to bounce. She was so chubby and so fat. And she was bouncing and shaking and bouncing. And on, and on the altar, the way she was shaking was amusing. I started laughing. So I moved to where she was. I began to impersonate her. And I was shaking with her. I gave her the microphone. I said, Mama, confess. And the woman began to scream. He said, beg my son. I am the one that locked the wife's womb. Beg my son. I'm the one that uses the wife's face to appear in the dream. And that young man outside was hearing people shout, hey, hey. So he decided to peep to check what was happening. He saw somebody confessing. And he peeped again. Who was confessing? His mother. Am I talking to somebody here? And the young man looked at me. When it was time to pray, I said, open your mouth and pray. And he turned to his mother. Mama, die. I said, young man, calm down. The Greek word, is he supposed to forget? Greek word the Bible says uh, from the day of John the Baptist uh, until now the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence it takes authoritative declaration to terminate generational affliction authoritative declaration to terminate generational affliction families some of you don't know the authority you have you don't know the authority you have one of my sons I was somewhere and in that state we were in that state and I was going to the airport I suddenly remember I said I have a son in this place and I saw his billboard so I called him I said where are you at he said that I was on my way to the airport to wait for you I said stay in your office my flight is still like four hours I'm coming to your office ah who, should I call people I said call them but don't call nobody I'm coming to your office we got there and he was crying he held my feet that's why you crying he said in the next 30 minutes there is a bulldozer coming to bring down the church I said come here he said here I said the real bulldozer just came The real bulldozer just came. I said, now I understand why God said I should be here. So I said to him, I said, I'm not going. He said, what? I said, no, I'm not. I still have flight. He said, I'm coming with military. I said, forget it. And we are sitting down. So we sat in the office. So I said, give us a chair. So I said, let's sit outside. Yeah. I said, where are they coming? He said, they will start bulldozing from out. Yeah, let's sit there. So without outside, I asked for the bottle of anointing oil. So I anointed the whole church. I anointed the gate. I anointed everything. The bulldozer came. And I was looking at them. Some security men came, showed him a paper that was a warrant, and said to him, well, for his own good, he should take out everything. Because the, the man said he's a Christian, actually. So that's what I'm telling you. We're told to grade down everything. But I'll give you time to take out. And I said to him, if you take out one thing, you have given it to the devil. We are sitting here. And I said, I'm sitting in front. This bulldozer will pass through me to bring down this building. You have to bulldoze me. I'm sitting here. If the God that called me allow you bulldoze me, bulldoze the church. They were looking. Please, apostle. The next thing, the man on the bulldozer started calling them that there's a problem. So they went there. He was starting, it wasn't moving. He was starting, it wasn't moving. He came down. He called a few people. They tried to do what they did. They were calling people. Call. The next thing, they called the mechanical check. He said their engine had packed up. So I said to the man, that's number one. You have two options. The next thing that we pack up now is your life. All of them with the guns came, they knelt down and said, We are Christian. We they go church. They sent us. I said, Go and tell them, like Jesus said, Go and tell John what you saw. I said, Go and tell them that as soon as you came, Engine knocked. And the man of God said, The next attempt, your own life will knock. Am I talking to somebody here? There are people you don't attempt. There are people you don't attend. But it comes and stems from sometimes when you are doing what you're doing and God is quiet, it's not because God is silent. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me say this to you. If Jesus had healed Lazarus, 
if Jesus had come on time when Lazarus was sick there would have been healing but no revival if Jesus had come early when Lazarus was sick there would have been healing but no revival he waited for him to die then he came the miracle of chapter 11 spanned into chapter 12 that Lazarus' life became a signpost. Many of the Jews that came in chapter 12 of John, they didn't come for Jesus. They came for Lazarus. To see that man that he has raised from the dead. Can I prophesy? As you open your right hand, I make a declaration upon your life. As you hear the sound of my voice, your life shall become a testimony. Take your seat. Take your seat. Hear me this day. You may have lost anything. If you have not lost family, you have not lost everything. You may have lost anything. If you have not, do you know what was given Job? Job never took off his clothes when he lost camels. Job never took off his clothes when he lost asses and oxen. Job, ne Job never took off his clothes when he lost material things. As soon as he lost family, he took off his clothes. You may have lost anything, anything. But if you have not lost family, you have not lost everything. Psalm 68 verse 6, what does God set in family? Solitary. 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 Saints are new that the last straw to hit a man below the belt is to hit his family. And that is why it becomes very comical and humorous. There are a young lady and see your family upside down and it means nothing to you. You are a young man or a young woman and you see your family scattered your brothers your sister with certain kind of funny characters that you know by this attitude and characters is going towards extinction and you are normal you are normal your children are behaving in an uncommon way and you are normal it means nothing to you your brother is addicted to drugs addicted to all kinds of stuff it means nothing to you your sister is, is moving from one man to another. It means nothing to you. Your father is a drunk. Your mother is whatever she is. It means nothing to you. Do you know what it means? That somebody went to bed and woke up and everything was gone. Went to bed full. Like Naomi said. You see, I came here full. I'm returning back empty. Woke up. There is nothing as hurting like having the label of being called a former champion. Nothing. It's better not to have had money before. It's better not to have tasted or seen money at all. And to get to that point, when you are stranded. When a man who has been wealthy and suddenly becomes broke, he becomes sick. No, no, no. It's not malaria. It's moneria. Moneria. He becomes sick. No. <laughs> there is moneria. When you have moneria, your body is not hot. It's your account that is hot. <laughs> That's moneria. Satan, look at that. Number one, the Bible says he saw them together. He saw them what? They were gathered in their brother's house. Number one, Satan hates unity in families. Satan hates 
some of you hearing the sound of my voice there are some crises in your family line there is a crisis between you and your brother your sister there's a crisis between you and your nephew and you think it is normal it is not normal most of them are spiritual that sometimes you just get angry you don't want to set eyes on your brother you don't want to set eyes on your sister you don't want to set eyes on your nephew many of them are fired from hell many of them are not normal when there is this unity in a family perpetual disunity witchcraft is at work when there is perpetual disunity brother is ready to kill brother have you not seen families like that when brother is ready to kill brother sister ready to kill sister who killed abel who killed abel who sold joseph talk to me who sold joseph there are families today when you see a younger brother envy jealous of an elder brother is targeting his money is targeting his property am i communicating right now a young man told me something yesterday his brother did i had to tell me call me and tell me what you are saying is confusing call me and tell me and when he was saying it i said to him just run run keep running if you have that kind of animal as a brother just run am i communicating here just run when somebody looks you in the eyes and tells you i will empty you it goes for your children finishes all of them goes for your finances finishes them goes for your your, your wife clears her and you are still calling people to make peace This thing is beyond confession. It's war fashion. It's war fashion. War fashion. You don't pamper Satan. You hammer him. There are things that should be handled headlong. I told you before. The Bible says when a man slaps you on one cheek, turn the other side. He never said turn the other cheek. He said the other side. The other side can be a gun. He hates family unity. He hates seeing a congregation where the families are united. So he will do everything to split the family. To make sure the husband and the wife got to a point where they are not on talking terms. So sometimes you are angry at your wife, angry at your husband, you think it's natural. It's not natural. An enemy has done this. All of a sudden, a once wonderful couple, I love you, I love you. You are the, you are my, the bone of my bone. You are the flesh of my flesh. You are my sugar. You are my honey. You are my tomato pep. You are my ginomoto. You are my no cube. All of a sudden, the man looks at the same woman and says, you are a witch. The same mouth. The same mouth. You are a witch. The same mouth. The woman says you are a beast. The same mouth. The same mouth. You hear me? You are not provoked. You are not angry. You are following the spiritual manipulation. You are under a spiritual attack. Am I speaking to somebody here? Listen, let me give you a trick. If you are sensitive, you will discover that when you pray most, there is peace in the house. When you are on fire in prayer, there is peace. Does that tell you that marriage is first spiritual? Anytime you see a husband and a wife praying intensely you will see peace you see them loving themselves like little children but when their prayer life goes cold the enemy comes in it means that you must just arrest the spiritual atmosphere so you are wondering why mama and i we don't have problems we don't have issues we are not pretending there's no we're not coming out of the altar to be faking anything this is it that's that's how it is that's how it is. Dean, you, you stayed, when you just came to town, you had no accommodation. You stayed, in, how long did you stay in my house? Nine months. And then it was a flat. We all using the same toilet, plus him. One bathroom, plus him. Kitchen, one, plus him. So it wasn't, <laughs> so it wasn't, um, they were quarreling, he didn't hear. <laughs> Nothing like they were fighting and they be hiding if I'm talking to my wife in my room you'll be here in the sitting room that's how big the house was <laughs> not for one did he hear us sometimes I pray in the sitting room he will go to his room 
Sometimes I will carry her. It will go. It is normal. You know why? When the atmosphere is always on fire, peace will be resident. Peace is resident when the atmosphere is always on fire. How? No, we just finished praying together. Where are we quarreling? How? We just finished praying together. I'm just sharing the scripture with us. She's running. I'm running. We are both jumping. When, when you're, 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 you are so prayerless, so fireless, won't you do something else? Will you be looking like that? You didn't pray. Won't you fight? Is your, is, is your mouth is your mouth for decoration? You didn't talk to God. Would you abuse somebody? <laughs> Am I communicating? So when I see a husband and a wife who are having crisis, I don't even talk much. I say, pray together, pray together. That's all. So I say, this morning, you know, a man came from one location around there. I say, Pastor, he and his wife were fighting all the time. So they talk, the wife judged for about 10 minutes, the man judged longer than the wife. So the wife was saying, why the man was judging? The, the wife took pen and paper. I was confused. She was judging some things. <laughs> so when he said, sir, I want to address some points. I said, is this a law court? Yeah, he said, no, 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 no. Somebody cannot lie, lie on me Why I'm still alive. I said, calm down. The woman was, that, the man brought out his own pen and paper. <laughs> You don't know what I see. I sat down, I was looking at them. When they finished, I said, okay, I'm going to pray for you people next week. I want both of you to be on seven days fasting. You pray together in the morning to start. Six in the evening, you pray for like 30 minutes. I'll give you scriptures to break. You start. Do you know by the, by the seven day they came together? Hold the hands. Hold the hands. I said, God, God, keep them. I said, we are fine, we are fine. I said, of course, I know you are fine. You can't pray together and quarrel together. You can't fight, you can't pray together. Satan is against family unity. Am I talking to somebody here? Many of us men are guilty. Guilty. I think I'm number one in that guilt. I'm number one guilty of it. There is what they call devotion at home. Sometimes when I have prayed till about four or five, and my wife says time for devotion, and they start by five. Most times I am very guilty. My body, I say, when me I was praying, you people were sleeping. Now me I want to rest. You people want to pray. Am I talking to somebody here? And if that devotion is handled by my wife, oh, you will regret your life. She can spend twenty minutes on one prayer point, and sometimes when I'm she's leading devotion, I'm say, what kind of wahala? Round up now. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I communicating? Yeah. when you're doing that devotion <laughs> I'm sorry dear I'm sorry. when it's handled by my children I'm so excited no when it's handled by some of my children not all of them if divine handles it I don't like it because we'll pray till we are tired if my wife handles it when I come in there I say with the same mama I say oh my god why did I come downstairs today she will first worship God worship God worship God sometimes I say this is not a music concert worship let us go they, I'm just confessing now because I don't tell you people. So I'm just telling you what is going through my mind. When you see me, sometimes I will sit down, I will stand up, I will sit down. It is called devotion. It should be brief. Let's summarize. Am I talking to somebody right now? I don't talk. Oh, I'm just looking at them. They are surprised hearing me see all this. That's what's going through my mind. Going through my mind. <laughs> Amen. Yesterday, I finished praying and I was a little bit tired. I finished um, I finished Wonders Without Number. I got home, they were having devotion. I went there. They were worshipping, so I joined the circle, held my hand, and we were worshipping. I was enjoying it. And they finished worship. I said, Amen. I thought we were going. Mama said, it's time for Rema for living. Ah! I told to my daughter, you people are still continuing. He said, yes. I sat down. They were teaching. Everything naughty was entering. <laughs> Nothing. My eyes were red. I've been praying. And after one, I, I mean, my, I, my early morning is 1 a.m. Some of you send me messages and see reply. 
at that time. 1 a.m. I've woken up. So from 6, 7, I want to rest. My wife continued, though. She was teaching, 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 teaching. I was already frowning. And I'm sure she noticed. So she now said, let daddy round up. I said, God, to help you. <laughs> I said, if only you know what was in my mind. I know they are surprised now. <laughs> Amen. But many of us are guilty. That time you come to stay with the family, spiritually, you register a point. That time you sit down with children, even if it's five, I'm saying this to you men, because most times men are guilty of it. If you are a woman here and you are guilty of devotion, I don't know who created you. Because a woman should be the one gathering the family together. Men, how many of you men are like me? Are like me? And sometimes you are guilty. You are guilty. Look at you, pretenders. Raise your hand. I can see you prophetically. And <laughs> maybe you want me to pick you by prophecy now. <laughs> And, and, and I, 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 when the Lord opened my eyes, I run down to join because when you do that, you are building a hedge in the family. Because if you can be spiritually united, you will be physically connected. Can I say that again? If a family is spiritually united, you will be physically connected. Number one. Don't forget, Satan hates unity in family. Number two, I'll give this two and I'll give one more and then we'll pray. The Bible says, and they were in their elder brother's house. When the devil wants to hit a family, he goes for the firstborn. He goes for the firstborn. I, I'm being practical now to you. I'm being, I preach in my life. I preach even my secret. I tell you everything. Because many of you look at the firstborn in your family. One time, Moses stood as a patriarch over Israel. And discovered it was time for census. While they were taking a census of the whole of Israel. They were checking out their number. When he got to Reuben, they saw women, 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 women. Uh, what happened? And then, women are wonderful people. Women are wonderful people but then in israel they count the men so they were counting women women and moses said what is going on where are the men and they began to open the books of the chronicles and they discovered that one time the, 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 their patriarch their father called jacob placed a word on reuben he said reuben thou art my firstborn genesis 49 from verse 3 he said thou art my firstborn excellency of power excellency of dignity but unstable as water thou shalt not excel from that day any time the whole of Israel go to war no other tribe will lose men except Reuben and their men were getting decimated 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 oh Moses said so this is what is happening to the men of Reuben and he screamed out in Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 6 let Reuben live and not die let his men not be few who are because there was a power of the firstborn I'm telling you the truth study your Bible very clearly you will see Abraham the firstborn was wasted move down to Isaac Esau was the firstborn he was wasted look at the children of Jacob firstborn wasted look at the children of David look at Adonijah look at Absalom wasted there's a power that fights the firstborn that was why the Bible calls us he said we are the church of the firstborn the heavenly Jerusalem we have come to the blood of sprinkling the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel I am penetrating myself in the realm of the spirit I am entering your family I'm entering your paternal family I'm entering your maternal family the power against the firstborn the power that contains the firstborn I'm speaking about you I'm speaking about your brother I'm speaking about your sister the power that stop others it is broken from their life it is broken from their life it is broken from their life. Somebody shot fire, fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, fire, fire. Somebody shot fire, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to pray. I am asking you. Raka Even if you lack revelation, don't you have observation? When I, 
my father one day was talking to me, telling me as a younger person how, what it takes to be a man. He was talking to all of us, to me and my brother then. He said, look at him. When he was 17, he left his father's house and joined the army, joined the military. And the atmosphere under which he left his father's house wasn't the right one. I discovered the same thing replicated itself in the one before me. When I was getting to 17, I rebelled and I left the house. So I knew there was a pattern. Not just leaving the house, because you can leave the house to go to school or do, but there must be that rebellion. There must be that thing that will make. So my daughter got admission almost at that age. I was to go to school. I carried that to the airport. I said, we must break this. My father didn't follow me. Me, I'm following you. We got to the airport. I stood with her. Hugged her for five minutes. I said, the yoke is broken. <laughs> Watched her enter the plane. Waited. It left before I moved. I said, I'm here to break the yoke. You should observe. Sometimes when I go before elders in my family, I listen to stories. When you have uncles and aunties who are old, ask questions. I'm telling you the truth. I've seen great people crash because they were busy fighting what they should fight. Grandstanding. Fighting what they should fight. And they crash. Am I communicating now? And they crash. That shall not be your portion. I said that shall not be your portion. The Bible says that every day Job will carry sacrifices for his children and he lost all of them in one day. The major intention of the enemy by attacking the family is to make them feel investment is inconsequential. Investment is inconsequential. Go to school for what? Job was investing and lost them. Satan wants to frustrate that certificate so you think that you, you went to school in vain. Satan wants to frustrate that home so you feel you married your wife in vain. A man was talking to his wife in my office and he asked his wife, he said, wait, to, when we got married, was I the one that paid or you paid? He said, because I'm trying to think that I opened my eyes and I paid diary on you. So I, I'm, I just remind, who paid? Was it you that paid? Or I that paid? So I said, sir, calm down. There was a payment. There was a payment. <laughs> <laughs> Satan wants the family to come to a point where a mother can look at the daughter and feel raising her up is a waste. Where a man can look at the children and feel raising them up is a waste. Where a man can look at his wife and the woman look at the husband and feel anger. Wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice in this place, and there's this anger you have for your husband, this uncommon anger for your wife, it's not normal. It's not. Anger for your wife. Anger for your children. Anger at your father-in-law. Anger for your mother-in-law. You mother-in-law, anger at your daughter-in-law. So mother-in-laws are just bad examples. You want to know what a mother-in-law is? Go and check Naomi. That even in the absence of the son, she was still loving to the daughter. As a mother-in-law, can your daughter relate freely with you? Can she call and say, Mommy, I'm coming to just spend time with you. I'm missing you. This one, when you are coming, she disappears. Because you are the lioness of the tribe. Your daughter-in-law is happy. It's a problem. She must not be happy. Why is she happy? Your son-in-law is happy. Why is he happy? If 
before I got married to my wife, I told my wife clearly, I said, your family, she has a wonderful, my mother-in-law was one of the most beautiful soul. Great woman. Wonderful woman. I told her, I said, you have extended family. Are they keep person? Are they keep person? If any of them cross my marriage, I keep person. If I go on my knees for that person. And she was laughing. I said, I'm not going to kill you with a gun. I will go on my knees and use you as suya. When a person gets to the point, he or she is now so provoked and she weeps before God. The way you treat people, can they treat your child like that? Will you treat your child like that? Will you treat your child like that? I'm being honest here. As a mother-in-law, will you treat your own... If that was your daughter, will you treat her like that? As a father-in-law, if that was your son, will you treat... You don't do that. You must be right. You must love them like your own. Are you listening? And you daughter-in-law that wants to be loved, you must show them the reason for them to love you. You must show the reason why you should be loved. You must be genuinely interested in their lives. My dad and my wife can gossip me. When I'm walking, they'll keep quiet. They can plan and see all things. I say, what did people discuss? Nothing. I say, she be on the altar. We said, all my worldly goods. <laughs> he said, not your father. He know reached that one. Are you following what I'm saying? There should be that harmony. Your mother-in-law is a witch. Your father-in-law is a witch. Everybody you married to is a witch. You have married, you have entered Kovu now. <laughs> Whatever you see inside Kovu, you collect it. Everybody is a witch. Your mother-in-law comes to the house. She stay on her own. Before you give her food, you first... Bah, 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 I she eat this food. I she eat this food. I she eat this food. Fire. 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 What is the difference between that one and Otomokpo? That thing you are doing now. She eats that one. And she, you, she's sleeping. That's why you are, you are going to go and check her. Yes, yeah, she's lying down in the guest room. You want to check if she has gone to meeting. <laughs> you are looking at her face. She now open her eyes. She catch you. <laughs> Between you and her, now who look like a witch? The person lying down or the one bending to? Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I prophesy into my family. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of unity. Everyone be upstanding. We are entering the third service. I'm going to prophesy. And we're entering the third service of miracles. But hear me, hear me, hear me. Anyone under the sound of my voice. Who is experiencing any trace of disunity. In your family. That devil of disunity dies now. That's your brother or your sister that wouldn't call anybody wouldn't talk to anybody has been severed from others wouldn't look at anyone wouldn't pick anybody's call he would be the one to reach out to the family i'm going to take a prayer now any power higher to waste my family be wasted wait 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 how can a man lose seven children in one day? Not several years. They died in one day in one room. A bedroom became a tomb. A bedroom became a burial ground. Now, you didn't get that. A wind and a fire fell on them. So they were not even buried. They were burnt. Are you ready to pray? I'm going to lift up our voice. That devil is a liar. Anyone. Anything hired. To waste my family can I say this to you even if it is somebody in the family that has given himself to the devil you know some of you 
There are things, because we are in a generation that has become so technological and so, um, I think technological is the word, civilized. The supernatural is beyond civilization. So there are testimonies we cannot even share. You see some things happening, wonders without number. People are wondering. People are wondering. Some say, I don't understand. A car engine broke down. They prayed, a new engine. Ah ah. Ah ah. Eh? That's why it's wonder. What is wonder? Wonder is something that makes you wonder. See, ah ah. A great man of God was talking to me, said, Apostle, I like your demeanor and your calmness. Don't blame people when they're arguing these things. If you were not you, you will argue. He said, I'm a man of God. Oh. He said, oh, when they come and they tell me, they say, see what a 